Hi, this is Rochelle at Scrapcraftastic, and today I am going to test out a new laminate pouch. I uh, recently went to Walmart to pick up some of the 3 mil Scotch laminate pouches. They did not have any, but they had this brand, which is Pen and Gear or Pen Plus Gear um, laminate pouches, and it looks like it is a Walmart brand. It's made by Walmart. It is. Pen and Gear is a trademark of Walmart Stores Inc. So, and I want to try these out, and if they work well, then I will go back and get more. So the reason I needed three mil laminate pouches, I do have five mil Scotch brand, but I wanted three mil because I want to laminate these tab dividers that I made using a cup file from my shop at scrapcraftastic.com and I also used a paper pad from Hobby Lobby by the Paper Studio that I got 50% off So anyway, so I've cut these, but it's not double-sided paper. It's single-sided paper. It's not the best quality cardstock, so it's a kind of a lightweight cardstock. So I decided to double these, and that will make them a little more sturdy. So I don't think I would need five, a 5 mil laminate pouch. So I have my laminator warming up. I'm going to go ahead and adhere the two, the front and the back of these together just with a little double-sided tape. This is just Scotch brand tape. Just so that they don't move around while I'm trying to put them in the laminate pouch. So now that I got them taped together, I'm going to open up this laminate and give it a try and see how it works. Okay, what I'm thinking about is I don't want to waste this excess laminate. And I can't fit two of them in here. So I'm thinking, no, nope, it's better if I turn it this way. So I guess I will have to waste some, but I can use the excess as pockets or as a window for a shaker card or something like that. So I'm going to live with the waist. Now these feel basically the same but for some reason I don't know it feels a little more flimsy than the Scotch brand. So this is what it looks like laminated. Um, I'm not sure about the quality. I think it is a little more flimsy even though it says it's three mil. I think it's a little more flimsy than the usual than the Scotch brand. But for the purposes that I need it for, I think this is perfect and I would buy it again so far. I'm gonna continue laminating these and see how they are and come back and give my final thoughts. And I'm putting something with a little weight on top of this. As you can see, it's like curled and not flat. So I'm just going to set something on here to try to help keep it flat. It's best to do that as soon as it comes out of the machine while it's still hot. So with this one, I'll do it right away. And that will help. And also the warmth of this one should help flatten the one that got cold off. Oh, I see some 
bubbling here. Okay, I do see some cloudy spaces that may disappear if I were to run this through again. And again, it feels awfully thin, but for what I'm using it for, it's great. Okay, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not. But can you see how it's like a grayish little area here? Then it's dark here. Then it's a grayish area here. I don't think that that is particularly a problem. Maybe you can see it better now. With the laminate, I think it is a problem with black paper or dark color paper. Because I've noticed previously with laminating, even with the scotch laminate, that I would get that grayed out look when I'm laminating something dark. I'm going to run this one through again just to see if it helps with that. In the past it did. So we'll just give it one more shot just to see. I think it may be something that happens when you laminate regardless of what color you're laminating but because if but when you're laminating something lighter it probably just doesn't show up and you can see it when you do a laminate something darker maybe. I don't know. But it does happen and it's not because the laminator is not hot enough because I've had it on for quite some time before I even started using it. Okay. And it's still there. So it's like a area right here and an area right there. Is that showing up? But you can't really see it. I mean, you have to kind of be looking for that to see it, but it is there. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're laminating darker papers or items or whatever. Especially, it seems to happen more also with large items. So, And this is the last one. So this is, every, that was the last one. These are all the dividers. I think based on just laminating them, again, I would do it again. I would use it again. Um, it's not as, the quality seems a little less than the Scotch brand, but in a pinch, these will do. And again, it's gonna depend on what you're laminating, what you're using it for. But these, it, it works. It works in my laminator, and it's not a Scotch brand laminator, but it works. So I'm going to go ahead and start trimming these down. And I'm keeping these the larger pieces so that I can use them, like I said, for um, pockets. And I can also use them for, and I didn't think to round the corners of these. I probably should have. And I can also use them for shaker windows. So I'm not going to go too close to the tab. So I'll hand cut the rest of that. And that's how I'm going to do these. And I've mentioned this before, if you're using one of these Fiskars paper trimmers, what I do is use where the white on this, the white area on this side ends. There's still a gap of clear plastic after the white ends into the, the crevice where the blade goes. So that's like the perfect place to line up your laminated piece so that you're staying outside of the bubble. So that doesn't break the seal and it gives you just enough excess laminate to keep that seal intact. So that's how I can do it so quickly without having to get really close and making sure I'm not breaking the seal 
and I have a consistent width of laminate all the way around. So the only thing left to do is to miss a couple of these trimming the hole punch side and then I'll go in and trim off the excess around the tab. I'm going to use these scissors instead of my favorite Tim Holtz scissors. If you can see, let's see, that's going to show up. The Tim Holtz scissors have a uh, zigzag edge. You can't really see it on camera, I don't think. It's just a little zigzag, so which makes them really good at cutting some things, but it leaves that zigzag impression or pattern on whatever you cut and in this case it will help if I took that off in this case I don't really want that zigzag and these scissors are supposed to be for precision cutting I don't use them that much so I need to start getting some use out of them let's see if I can precision cut these tabs off <laughs> Okay, I can see this is going to take a long time to do. So I'm going to finish these off camera and come back and see where we are from there. So here they are all trimmed up. The only thing I haven't done is punch the holes. And I think I will run them back through again just to make sure everything's sealed up nice and well. But... Again, as I've said already, I would buy this laminate again. If it was really something important, I would probably stick to using the Scotch brand. But just for general use in my own personal planner, I have no problem with this Walmart brand. So that is it for this video. If you would like to see more videos like this, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. Please make sure to comment, like, and share the video. That really helps me build my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.